Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how you can create reusable UI using Razor class library. So in the last couple of videos I've been talking about how to move most of our code from our Blazor Basm project to shared class library. In this video I'm going to try and move the components which are there in the Blazor WebAssembly project to Razor class library so that we could use these common classes and components in different UI frameworks. Let's say if you want to move to Blazor Server Project or Blazor Mavi Project, Razor Pages or MVC, we could use these classes across different UI frameworks. So we're going to try and move the components which are there in Blazor WebAssembly Project to Razor class library in this video. So when I was doing this, I ran into some challenges for lazy loading, hosting environment, referring to CSS, JavaScript, you know, app settings related changes and runtime config too. So we are going to look into these challenges. And for demo, we are going to use Blazing chat library. We are going to try and move these components like profile, contacts, settings, and there are other components like main layout and even the app component, which is the root component. That's something that we are going to try and move to our Razor class library. So let's open our Visual Studio and let's get started. So you can see that our components are in our pages and shared folder and imports. Razor components is where you write using statements and app.razor is where our application gets started from. So we're going to try and move these components to Razor class library that I'm going to create. For creating Razor class library, I'm going to right click on the solution, add a new project, which is going to be Razor class library. You can find it by typing Razor class library. You'll see that C sharp project. And then I'm going to click on next. I'm going to name my project as Blazing Chat dot components because that's where we're going to keep all the components. And then click on next. And I'm going to select framework as .NET 6 because that's what's latest right now. And then I'm going to click on create. That's going to create a Razor class library project in my solution. If you don't know what Razor class libraries are, I have already made a video about it in my Blazor server tutorial. I'll put the link of that video in the video description. But basically what this is, is you can put components in this project and reuse them in your client project. So that's what we're going to try and do now. We're going to try and move these components, the components which are there in pages folder, shared folder, import sort razor, and even the root component. We're going to try and move them to our components value. So I'm going to literally track them and drop them in the solution. It's going to ask me to replace the import sort razor, which is already there in the components project. I'm going to say that yes. And then all those components will get moved. And let's delete these components which are there in the client project. We don't need them anymore. Now that we have deleted these components, we need to refer our client project to components project so that it knows what all components to run, right? So I'm going to add that reference. I'm going to add project reference. I want components from Blazing Chat components project. So I'm going to hit OK here. And then we also need some classes which are there in the shared project like view models and then there are some models handlers extensions so we need these classes in components project too so i'm going to add that project reference here so that we could you know call http clients and everything so i'm going to add that project reference in my components project so i have added these project references let's build our solution and see what all errors we get, right? So once I start building this, we're going to run into this lazy loading problem. We used lazy loading to load our Radson library, but lazy loading is a web assembly specific feature. So we can't really put that in our Razor class library. So I'm going to remove that feature now and not worry about it right now. So to remove the feature, I'm going to go to my app.razor because that's where the error is. If I open my error list, you can see this 
app.tracer is where the error is. So I'm going to open this app.tracer and you can see this, this is a WebAssembly related service and we can't really use this in our components project. So I'm going to remove this feature. I'm going to remove that line and then additional assemblies that we are using here and on navigation async, we can't really do that anymore. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove this property and this event too so that we don't get these errors and also in my project file in client uh, i'm going to remove this item group which is telling to load redson blazer dll lazily so i'm going to remove that and then you can see that those errors are gone we don't have those errors the next error that we are going to fix is going to be about app assembly. So the router needs to know the app assembly where all the routes are, and it's referring to program, which is in client project, and we don't have this class in components project anymore, but we do have the app, which is the current class, and we just need the assembly to get all the routes which are there in this application. So I'm just gonna use this app. And then we have an error which is related to main layout. We do have main layout now in components project. So if I open shared project, we have this main layout here, but in import store tracer, we don't have the correct using statement. So I'm gonna change this to blazing chat components dot shared so that it knows where to get this main layout from. It takes some time to load you know, get rid of that error. So I'm gonna open this file, it doesn't go, then open the file and then that error goes away. Okay, so that error is gone. I'm going to check the next error. The next error is going to be about iHosting environment. So we need hosting environment in our error Razor component. We need to know if we are in development region, or in the production region. So we are using hosting environment for that. But this is in a ASP.NET core hosting package. So we're going to need this package in our components project too. So I'm gonna copy that project reference, that package reference, and put it into my project idea. Once I do that, then this error should go away. Now that we have fixed this, the next error is going to be about this app so we moved all the root components from our client project to our component project we also moved you know this app component too so we'll need to add just the using statement here so i'm going to add that using statement here so that we don't get this error now once all these errors are fixed i'm gonna try and build my solution again and see if you are getting any errors or not we're going to get some warnings but that's fine we can solve them later but we don't want any compile time errors so let's see if it fixed all the errors or not so you can see that all the errors are fixed you know it's building all solutions now let's run this and see if it's working fine or not and you know that's how easy it is to move the components so we moved all the components now we are running our application to see if we can if we can uh, see our application so i'm gonna close my browser first and then run this again and you can see that our application is starting and our application is working just fine so we moved all these components from our WebAssembly project to components project and all these components are working fine. Now I'm gonna take it to the next level. I'm going to move all the resources too. So we are using the CSS images and JavaScript files in client project. I don't want to keep them in my WebAssembly project because if I want to run these components in Blazor server tomorrow, I don't want to copy paste these resources from my Blazor WebAssembly project to Blazor server project. So I'm going to copy these resources and then move to the root folder, which is there in my components project. So I'm going to literally try to drop them in my root folder here. So those will get added here. 
and I'm going to remove these CSS files from there in from my main project. So those are gone, but we'll need to have the correct reference in our index.html file. So if you look at these other class libraries that we're referring to, to get the CSS files, it's using underscore content rats and blazer. And that's something that we'll have to do for our references too. So I'm going to copy this piece of text and put it here. Wherever we are using Bootstrap, Bootstrap is in CSS, in components CSS here. So if I want to access that, I'm going to have to use that content blazing chat dot components in order to get the CSS, which is in bootstrap file. And same thing that I'll have to do for app CSS and app light CSS too. So I'm going to copy this and put it here. And this is going to be different for your project because you know you'll be using your CSS files, but make sure that you're making these changes all across your application. So I'm using the CSS reference in my JavaScript file too, whenever we are changing the theme. So I'm gonna add that line of code here too. And we'll also have to change JavaScript references too. So there are a couple of places where I am using JavaScript isolation, we are loading these JavaScript files lazily, and that's somewhere we'll have to change that reference to. So I'm going to add this content blazing chat components here so that it knows where site.js is. And uh, we have one more place where we need to change this, which is going to be in settings page, wherever we are, you know, clicking on that checkbox in order to change the theme of the project. So I have changed all the references in my index.html and JavaScript files and razor components. I'm going to rerun this application again and see if it's working fine or not. And it's going to load all my CSS and JavaScript that I need for my project. I'm going to do a control F5 to show you that it's a hard refresh and these things are changing. If I press F12 and go to sources, you can see this. We have this underscore content folder here in which you will find our blazing chat components. And that's where our CSS, you know, app, dark CSS, and our site.js is. So this is how you can move the resources from your client project to your component project and you know reuse these components across different ui frameworks i also ran into some other issues with app settings.js see app settings.js json which is which needs to be at the client project so if i open my root folder at the client project this is where app settings.json is and you can't keep this, you shouldn't keep this in your components project, but you do need to have access to this. Like if I go to my chat.razor component, I need app settings here to find out the signal or hop, right? So I had to add this service, which is app settings, and it is going to build options. And that's how I'm using these app settings in my blazing chat components so that's something that i had to do and another thing that i had to change was to add a file in my my debug folder so if i go to my blazing chat source and if i go to the main project in bin in debug.net 6 here I had to this I had to have this uh, runtime config, which is telling that this is the main project. This is where you should start the project, and that's what you know. Fix this like host policy dot dll error you'll get if you don't add this. And uh, I had to add this file in order to get rid of that error. 
So this is how you can create a Razor class library and put reusable components there. And in future, if you would like to change your UI framework, you can easily do that. I'm gonna ask questions from now on in the end of the videos before I end the videos so that you know this could become more interactive and fun. I wanted to ask what does Blazor stand for? How did ASP.NET Core came up with the name Blazor? Put the answer in the comment section below and let me know what do you think. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below too, or you can reach out to me on my Facebook or Twitter handle. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.